me and Madison went and saw Garth Brooks in Nashville and we got back to the house and I was like, I should I text him and just tell him what a great show he did? She was like, he he, he don't care about you. He ain't gonna text you back. <laughs> I was like, screw it, I'm texting him. I had a couple drinks and I text him and he hit me back five minutes later. Hey friends, it's your girl, Emily Curl, and today we're hanging out with country music artist, Travis Denning is here. Travis, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time. We just discussed this off camera, but we are both from Georgia. Georgia yep. Bulldog fans, national champs. Nah, oh, hey, hold on, hold on. Let me see. What do we got here on the wallet right there? Oh, uh -huh. came from fair, yeah. that G. I keep that thing on me, all right? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, this is Monday afternoon, Travis, and I thought what better way to spend the afternoon than by drinking a little something. So do you have your drink here with you? I do, it's a very, um, very no ice Jack and Coke, but yes. <laughs> the no ice, I love it. Um, so today we're gonna be playing a game called Me Versus Drunk Me. And it's a really fun game. The way this one works is I have some different scenarios for you. So I'm gonna give you a scenario and you tell me if this is something that you would do, just normal as you, or something that drunk you would do. And if it's something that drunk you would do, you have to take a sip. Okay. But don't worry, I also have my drink here, so I'll be sipping along with you. Beautiful. So cheers to that, Travis, and on that cheers. note. <laughs> question one, here we go. Me or drunk me, bet on a UGA football game. You know, honestly, probably drunk me because I don't like to sports gamble. Oh, really? Which is pretty crazy. I, I, I may try and get into it a little bit, but I like to play craps and stuff. Like that's the gambling I like to do. And I just, because my thing is if I get into sports gambling and I get into it too much, I don't need to waste my Saturday worrying about Kent State playing some other team that doesn't matter because I got 500 bucks on That's my, so true. A money too much stress. Yes. Okay, what about question two? Buy the hometown bar around. Oh, I'd have to be drunk. I'm so stingy. I don't, I don't. I'll buy my really? friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll buy my friends stuff, but if I'm going to buy the bar around, I, I'm, I'm going to be drunk. I'm going to be drunk and loose with the finances by that point. <laughs> no, when you, you're from Warner Robins, when, what's it like? Have you got to play a show there and go home and play a show? What is that like? Uh, I did I did just play Macon, Georgia in March. So that was pretty awesome. I played the um, auditorium there with Cole Swindell. And so it was, it was, it was kind of a hometown show for both of us because he grew up, you know, an hour, hour 15 south of there. But uh, it, it was super special. Uh, you know, had a lot of buddies there. A lot of friends and family. My old guitar player came out on stage, did a song with us. It was really cool. Oh, it's special. Um, what about question three? Me or drunk me? Play a prank on your fiance at Madison. Me. I do that almost every day. <laughs> What's the best one? Do you like scare videos? I was about to say. Yeah, uh, one of my one of my most most recent favorites was I started yelling at her from the guest bathroom, and I was like, Madison. She's like, What? I'm like, What? What? What's going on in here? She's like, what? I'm like, you need to come in here right now. I was like, the toilet is smoking. And she's like, what? I'm like, get, I was like, the toilet's smoking, like get in here. And when she walked in, I'd put two toilet rolls like this for eyeballs and then an old paper towel dispenser under the lip. So it looked like the toilet was smoking a cigarette. Smoking a cigarette? I have a video of it somewhere. It was pretty good. I love it. So are you, is your type of humor, do you like the dad jokes? Is that what you go for? I, I just love it all. Yeah, dad dad jokes and then incredibly inappropriate dark stuff, which I can't go into. That's that's only so for So we'll the keep really it light on the interview, a few more sips light, of the drink. Light, light on the interview and light in just everyday life, but with the close friends, we'll we'll go we'll go down rabbit holes to where it's not even funny anymore, but you're just kind of like laughing because it's so ridiculous. It's escalated so quickly. Everybody everybody has that group of friends for sure. Oh, of course. What about question four, me or drunk me, take a pre-show ice bath with Dirk Bentley? Uh, me, because I hadn't had a drink yet. I was, I was yeah, shocked I, by that. Tell us about that. It was cold as hell. I mean, it was or cold as the opposite of hell, I guess. It was so freezing. I mean, it was, I've done one before, so I was a little prepared, but like your extremities get so painfully cold. Like your feet feel like someone's just stabbing them. Like it's so and so cold. what's the purpose of doing it? You just feel more awake? I guess. I didn't feel no damn different. All I felt was cold. I'm telling you, <laughs> it was so bad. Like, it was just miserable. But 
I mean, I kind of was a little energetic afterwards because I think my body was trying not to go in shock. But other yeah. Than that, yeah. Well, you've also been on tour with Dirk Bentley, which looks like such a hoot. It seems like you guys are having so much fun. What has that experience been like for you? It's been unreal. I mean, he he literally has been my number one like bucket list tour ever. Like, always wanted to open up for him, and uh, he's just a sweet guy. Like, I mean, we have, we have a lot in common. Like, we love the outdoors and stuff. And I don't know, he's just such a great guy. He he hang. I mean, he hangs around a lot. Like, he's not one of those guys that's flies in right before the show and I mean we play pickleball you know my band and pickleball. his band and stuff yeah. and he's just a great guy a lot of fun on stage and I mean watching him every night is just a class in like entertainment uh, amazing yeah I mean and seeing a different side of him too behind the scenes is there anything that you think the fans would be surprised to know about him or like any pre-show rituals or the way he does his show that maybe you've got to witness firsthand he will go on stage perform get on a plane, fly to Colorado, and then go bike 50 miles in the mountains first thing in the morning. Like oh he's an God. animal, like he is have, an animal. Have you gotten used to that lifestyle, that quick turnaround of flights, shows, tour, all of that stuff? I mean that, but I ain't doing a 50 mile bike ride next morning. <laughs> I'm just laying on my couch all day is what I'm doing. <laughs> That's very but fair. Yes, I, I had a nice little 3.15 a.m. wake up call the other day for a flight. So it, it's not even a matter of are you, you used to it. You just have to get used yeah, to it. Yeah, you just got to get get accustomed. Yep. Okay, what about question five for you being on stage? Me or drunk me, bring out the Miller Lite on stage. Uh, me. I, I'll always. <laughs> I'm, I, I have a, a, assumed a new personality called Miller Lite Man, and, and I do it with Dirks. I throw out some beers to the crowd during Beers on Me. Then I have a 12-pack that I put on top of my head and I walk around and that's my new superhero. Name. Superhero, is uh, is Miller Lite your go-to? That's your go-to drink? Yeah, out of beer it probably is. I don't, I don't, I actually don't drink a ton of beer, at least on the road I don't, cause it just, after about three, you're just full and miserable and you so know, true. bubbly and all that. So I stick to Jack and Diet Cokes. Normally. Okay, what about question six? We got two more for you. Question six, me or drunk me, text the most famous person in your phone. Uh, drunk me because it actually happened f pretty recently. Okay, tell us a story. All right, it's a massive name drop, okay, and I have to do it for the story. So watch your head with these names dropping. Put your hard hat on it in there. But um, <laughs> me and Madison went and saw Garth Brooks in Nashville, and we got back to the house, and I was like, I was like, should I text him and just tell him what a great show he did? She was like, he 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 don't care about you. He ain't gonna text you back. <laughs> And um, I was like, screw it, I'm texting him. I had a couple of drinks and I text him and he hit me back five minutes later. Stop it. He what literally did he say? texted me back and he was just like, I just hit him and said like, hey dude, it's Travis. Like, hope you've been doing good. And uh, I was just like, I was like, I saw a show night. I was like, man, I just can't tell you how great it felt to be in the crowd watching a show. I haven't been able to do that in a long time and you were so good. And, and he hit me right back and he was like, Bro, I'm so glad to know you were there. How have you been? How's things going? And all, and we kind of texted for like a just a brief. And I'm like, this guy literally just got off stage. I was like, that which goes to prove why Garth is like the goat, and he really. And is. you know what? Every every single country artist I feel like says that they're like, when I met Garth, that was a game changer. So that is so cool. Honestly, cheers to that. I love that. Here's that drunk text. I mean, well. <laughs> I met him in 2018 and it was part of a, a, a CMA uh, program, which was really cool, called the Kickstart Program for New Artists. And I met him and it was me, Jameson Rogers and Cassie Ashton. And he, and he gave us all his phone number. And he's like, if you ever want to talk or anything, just shoot me a text. I'm like, that was a stupid thing to tell you, boy, because it's probably You're like, gonna done happen. and done. Yeah. <laughs> I said, sweet. But, and uh, even next time, it'll probably be a FaceTime. You better watch out. I Miller Lite Man comes awesome. out. It's... That'd be awesome. <laughs> okay, what about last question? Me or drunk me? Keep it red round here. Oh, Which all, one? Of, all of the me's. <laughs> the, the, the sober me, the drunk me, the belligerently drunk me, the, all of, the church me. You got to keep it red around here. I love it. Let's talk about Might As Well Be Me, your new EP. First off, congratulations. Tell us a little bit about this project, what it means to you. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, I, I'm so excited. I feel like it's so uh, reflective of where I'm at right now in my life. I mean, I'm turning 30, I'm planning a wedding. And by planning a wedding, Madison is planning a wedding and I'm going to be there. But uh, <laughs> Shout out Madison. <laughs> yep, shout out Madison. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of songs about me and her, you know, 
really never been a love song guy and so now i'm slowly turning into one and and then there's just songs about like the way i like to live and the way i grew up and those are things i've always loved tapping into because i think it's something i'm proud to sing about and it's a great balance between those two things and i, I think the ep itself is the first record i've done uh where me and my producer jeremy stover we brought in paul di giovanni to co-produce and it just it took it to another level. It brought another perspective in that we, you know, that just made it so much bigger. I mean, the mixes sound great. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I think it's uh, it feels very much like me. And I think that's reflective of why I picked the title. Yeah, I mean, and like I said, Red Round Here, that was my favorite when I initially did the first listen. What is your favorite on the album? Maybe right now, because I'm sure at certain points it changes, but right now, which one are you most excited for the fans to hear? I mean, right now, Buy a Girl a Drink is probably my favorite on there, which it, it came out a couple weeks ago. Uh, and it's it's my favorite because of the response. I mean, it's been crazy. Um, it's it's streaming its butt off and the people are people are already just singing it back at shows, which is insane. No and way. Oh, yeah, insane. it was we, we played a show in Myrtle Beach, like a little random headline show, and it was just epic. Like it was I was looking at my band going like this is this is nuts, man. And so that one's uh up there. Uh, I'm pretty partial to Red around here. I think it's pretty rocking. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's we're, we've been playing that one live, and people are like, I don't even know this, but it does make me. But we like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I do want to party when I hear this. And you mentioned you're about to have a big year. You're about to get married again. It's just so exciting. Do you and Madison have y'all picked out your first dance song? Because I imagine as a country artist, like you probably have some ideas, right? There's so many good ones to choose from. Yeah, we we have picked it. Uh, it's a uh, your song by Elton John. Oh, Elton John moment. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah, someone's like, is it going to be one of her dad's songs? I was like, she would divorce me right there in front of God and everybody. <laughs> I swear. She'd be like, get out of here. Goodbye. Don't ever want to see you again. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Um, well, Travis, we're so excited for you. Thank you so much for your time, for playing me versus drunk me. I feel like most of them, we actually got you spot on. Weren't many drunk me's in there. Yeah, I mean, there was no, it was like half and half. I felt, yeah. I mean, there, there, there's not a lot that drunk me wouldn't wouldn't do sober so and vice versa <laughs> and we love that energy travis thank you so much again congratulations for everyone out there go stream might as well be me the ep it's out now on iHeartRadio, and we'll see you guys next time travis thank you again see you soon take care